12 bottles because it's summer and this is exactly what I want to drink in the summer. It's like pissing down right it's, outside. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's about to be summer for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For the American. Absolutely. I'm going home in three weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sun is shining. <laughs> Welcome, wine for the people. Six wines, how good, how much, how many, that's our job. Kindly today is supplied by our friend Perry, who's actually worked in the winery here at Unico Zillow for the last 10 or so weeks. Hey, um, I'm Perry. I have been the harvest hand at Unico Zillow for the past few months. Uh, I come from the US, uh, from Northern Virginia, so right outside of DC. I used to sell Unico Zola's wines. I'm super stoked to uh, be able to come travel here and learn how to make the wines they make here. I brought over three wines with me from Virginia, way over on the East Coast, way different than California and the rest of the American wines anyone might have had here. So super excited to share them because they're super unique and cool. He's flown over from America and he's brought three American wines with him. And we're about to stack those up against three Australian wines, a couple of weird new numbers, some classics kind of in the mix, but we got six wines to try. Let's see what we and Perry think of these wines. No, no, it's like. Uh, we're doing. It's it's basically it's an Australia versus America. Is that is that that's that's the vibe. That's the vibe. This is what we're doing. All right. Let's see. Let's see if Perry can do his worst to trip us up. It's got some. Herbaceousness, got some little bit of uh, our friend Brett. G'day Brett, how you doing? This is American Brett maybe. Could be, is this American Brett? <sighs> Getting some like super fun berry stuff, like kind of like fresh, real raspberries, like crushing them in between your fingers. Brilliant wine, great structure. In fact, the, the, that's probably the most redeeming thing about this wine is the structure of it. Feels the mouth without being too jarring and adjacent. It's not like it's standing on pillars. It feels like it's sort of sitting in sand. Got some pepperiness. Got some like green capsaicin kind of characters. But underneath that, it's like juicy cherry, black currant, black, blackberries, all that kind of stuff. This is actually served chilled. You might be able to see a little bit of the condensation there, but this is chilled. 26, uh, uh, 26 American, probably 32 Australian, based off the things I have tasted here. You know, for me, I'm about to travel back to the US and it's gonna be summer, so I would buy a case of this. Uh, just have it uh, as a little porch wine. All right, wine number two. Mm. So right off the bat, I'm thinking this one's gonna be Australian. It's got that kind of fun little like rubber bandy smell I get from a lot of like, especially Clear Valley Riesling, but I see it in a lot of other Australian whites too. Lean, fresh, vibrant, bright, lemon meringue, like pithy lemon meringue. Lemon tart, lemon curd, lemony, lemony fresh. If this has stupidly high acid, could only be one thing. Oh. Starting to get that margarine age character that's really pleasing in this style of wine. Oh man, that's so yummy. Despite the weight, still got some really uh, good fun acid to it. Um, like really kind of lingering around. Uh, I like it. It's uh, maybe a good autumn wine, maybe, I don't know. I like this kind of white wine all the time. Um, so I reckon based off other Australian stuff I've had around this, it would probably put it around 35. But I'll tell you what, this lemon curd thing, that you smell, you taste it too, and the back palate is actually not harsh, even though there's plenty of drive and acid line, it just perfectly curves around the back palate. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, $42 and 12, please. Didn't think I'd ever say that about a wine that I thought looked like uh, Albarino, but mm, go figure. Number three, we got some fizz. La oh, that looks so good. Look at that froth dog. I know I provided one sparkling, so I have a feeling I know what this is, but I'll pretend like I don't know what it is. So between this, which is given like kind of like a like a hot apple cider, uh, almost like getting into like a little cinnamon territory and the rain going on, it's like making me want to fall asleep by a fire, which is not normally something I get with a pet nut. I mean, gotta be fizzy. Definitely gotta be fizz. Either that or the winemaker done fucked up. Oh, that's so much fun. That's so delicious. Oh, I love this. This is so tasty. So yeah, wow. It's super, super round texturally. Almost kind of has a little bit like of a, like a batonage kind of taste to it. 
that's super good. I would put that, you know, pet knots can be expensive, especially because this tastes like it's had a little bit of time on the lees. And that either means you're putting it in some sort of vessel and stirring, which takes labor, or you're like keeping it in bottle for a long time. So that's gonna probably add some la uh, some cost to it. I probably put this around 35 to 40 USD. I flat out refuse to believe that that is made from the honourable grape. That is that is made from the dirty, dirty apple. Uh, that is 100% apple cider, and I freaking love it. 32 bucks a bottle. It is really good Normandy style cider. Wicked. 12 bottles, please. So another very clear, sort of straw, yellow colored, white wine. Oh wow. Beautiful, beautiful, golden hued, crisp, brilliant clarity. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, talking about something that's got a decent whack of svelte oak to it. It's a ripper. It is an absolute ripper. It is such a pure exession, a example of this variety, this style, this region, just beautifully done. Banging a little wine. So it's nice, it tastes like it's got like a little kiss of like a new oak, a little bit of uh, time on the lees. That's some good complexity to it. It's missing a little bit of acid that I would like to see. If you jump on the link in the description below and you support us in the different drop section, even though these aren't from different drop, that's gonna help me be able to afford this wine right here. You want to, I would like a thousand of these in my cellar for this. Really, I'll grab, I'll grab half a dozen. Wine number five. Another pretty red wine. This one's looking a little bit deeper, kind of ruby. Uh, can't see the stem in it. Chocolate, spice, cardamom. Damn, this thing is intense. Got this lovely kind of like milky, like milk chocolate kind of texture. Nice like fine graphite tannin, uh, which is really lovely, but super refreshing. Yeah, so it's it's honestly like, it's got a, life, a lot of life on the palate. I was kind of afraid by the nose that it might be like a little bit just kind of over extracted, but there's a lot of freshness, um, a lot of life coming in here. Not Australian, can't be. And this is the thing about that I'm, I'm gradually coming, this is, okay, hot take here. I think Australia's best wines are white wines. Really, really delicious wine. I'm big into this. Um, I think this is a cool, like lovely medium bodied wine that's like, that's kind of very approachable, but it's still got some interesting characters that some people might really get into. And yeah, delicious. Really, really tasty. Just a very, very fun medium bodied red that will be fun food match too. Wine number six. Got this kind of, it's very pale, but it's got this kind of coppery character as well. Oh, very leathery, very like iodine -y. This one's got a bit more of a tannic structure than any of the other ones. Um, kind of some dried herbs uh, going on, which I like. This one, you know, it tastes a little bit older. Oh yeah, it's like really sort of brief, sort of flippant hints of raspberries and carrot cake and a little bit of the old black forest cake going on. A lot of cake. I've, I'm, 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 I'm really into cake right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've, we've had some like baked goods uh, down in the kitchen downstairs and I'm not necessarily like, I'm not really a baked goods guy, but fuck me, I dominated that donut. It's got this really youthful Nebbiolo thing. Tannin's really tight, really crunchy. Dried fig, dried prune, cascara, red currant character that's really tasty. Probably wouldn't pay that much for it. I, 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 I don't mind tasting interesting, thrilling, different drinks. I don't like buying 12 bottles of them. Uh, holding on to wines costs money. So I'm guessing maybe getting up to like 40 Australian. Uh, what did you guys think? Six wines. Uh, we had three Aussie, three American. Do you guys know which ones are which? Because only I know. I am positive I know which two of them are. There was two at the end where I wasn't completely sure, but I'm feel like I know which ones were rich. I, I, I've, I've, got, I've made some, some guesses. What I do know is that I, as of, I think this year almost, probably the most amount of money I've ever spent. This is probably one of my favorite brackets of wine Sick. in a really, really long time. Fuck yeah. Uh, wine number one definitely felt vinous and I mm -hmm. really, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was super tasty. I love this wine so much. Um, it's such, so, so, so tasty. Straight off the bat, I went American. Yeah, it's absolutely American. That was, I went American. That was my bet, American. Uh, I thought it was like a Cab Franchi thing. Uh, I wanted three bottles and I would pay $37 US. I'd pay 36 US, 12 bottles. Uh, I said for this one, a 26 USD. Go up to 12 bottles, cause it's summer and this is exactly what I want to drink in the summer. 
It's like pissing down right it's, outside. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's about to be summer for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For the American. Absolutely. I'm going home in three weeks. Yeah, exactly. And sun is shining. Fuck, that's really good value. That's pretty good. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. So that's about $900 Australian. Young one. Young one. Oh, yeah. Label Shamba Sun. Yes. Shamba Sun. So this is a hybrid. This is not yeah. purely Vitis vinifera. Oh, so it's um, from Virginia. From Virginia. Uh, all the three wines I brought today were from Virginia. So everything here is East Coast wine. That's sick. Yeah. Wow. So what? So besides Chamberson, what's in this? Uh, so it's almost completely Chamberson, and then I think it's 4% Vidal Blanc, which is another hybrid, uh, white oh, hybrid wow. though. So yeah. mixed together to just give it a little bit more acid. So like, it's a, <laughs> it's a high elevation site. Yeah, I love it. Um, I'm super interested in hybrids, uh, you know, being from Virginia and also just like looking at it from like an environmental standpoint, they require less chemical inputs. Moving along. Uh, one number two. One number two. Aussie. Uh, what do you reckon? Aussie. Aust Australian, for sure. Yeah, yeah gotta be. And I... I had an inkling because we, we sort of discussed lucidly as to what might be in this tasting to make it mm -hmm. an equal comparison. You yep. chose wines, we knew that we were coming from like a pretty subtropical place, pretty yep. warm, pretty humid, that we're going to try to find something closer to it. I smelt it and I'm pretty sure it's Sam. Yep. But the back palate on this is so nicely creamy and buttery, it surprised yeah. me. I, w I said that. Lemon curd little, yeah. all the way. So it's good. It's pretty sick. Um, yeah, it's got to be Sam. Um, and it's, it's it, like, as far as like peak drinking of a Sam, like this has definitely got some age to it. It is, we have cracked this at the perfect mm. time. Uh, what do you guys say? Uh, I wanted uh, 12 of this for 25 bucks. 12 for 42. Uh, I didn't take notes and I kind of forget. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, uh, going back for this, I would say like 36 Australian. Maybe, no, probably more like 42 Australian. Um, and I love Hunter Valley Semyon. So if I said something different in the past, delete that but it's like uh, I would take a case of it it's super tasty yeah so for $42 Australian equals about six US cents um, so uh, lucky what is this oh it's true oh, yeah. okay. oh, well, it's not like top level Dude, stuff but 2016. it's like nice, that nice little yeah. mid level not like super like super uh, cheap like entry level stuff not like it's not that one but it's the good little happy medium and it's super good <laughs> Yeah, dude. I, That's a no-brainer. It's it's like lemon. It's like drinking lemon curd, the Venice version. Yep. And it's like, amazing. With that much age, just amazing. The fuck is this next thing, though? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I loved it. I wanted twelve, and I would pay thirty-two bucks for it. This is this. But is, it's not of the great. Yeah. So this is um, my favorite wine of the lineup. It's so much fun. So yeah, good. I wanted a dozen. I'd pay fifty US. Um, which would probably be the price of a used Toyota Corolla. Mate, um, it is Granny <laughs> Smith delicious. slash Pink Lady. You know, it is it is one hundred percent apples. It's got to be so good. It's it's so good. I love it. This is a co ferment, fifty four percent heirloom crab apples, and. 46% of Vidal Blanc, which is the hybrid that was blended in with that one. Can Lucky, uh, 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 yeah, I would've, yeah. Lucky, can I have a look at this? This looks fucking sick. This is incredible. Um, so this is this is done by uh, Patois Cider. One of the nicest, super, super nice guy. Um, goes around, finds like uh, abandoned orchards around the state because That's sick. Virginia used to have like much more of an like orchard culture. So I think he does a lot of foraging, but then also works with like uh, orchard uh, people around the state, Dude. trying to uh, kind of work with some of those things. You know, going back to talks about like humidity and disease and like some of the difficulties growing in the region, one way around that is just like- Don't just, grow grapes. Don't grow grapes. <laughs> don't grow grapes. No, <laughs> or, like, just don't. Yeah, like <laughs> apples are great. And you can get into a whole discourse, like what is wine? Like, is this wine? Cause I think it should well, be considered wine. it says wine. cider on there, so maybe not. I think legally they have to say it's cider if it has apples in it, but like. But how, what a great way to sell cider by putting the words pet nat on it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it pretty much is. Apple pet nat. It's I, so yummy. And you gotta be confident when your labeling is just two smudges. <laughs> just, <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, so far. It wasn't my favorite lineup, but it was a close, close it's second. It's super, super good. Semi-high elevation sites, which is another kind of key uh, thing in the mm. state. We get pre uh, pretty bad late spring frosts mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, just the other day, like it went from, so we're like, we're hitting budding now because we had like basically all of April, I think most of the state was sitting around 27 degrees Celsius mm. almost every day. But then they had one night where 
in the span of like 12 hours, it shot down to like negative five. Um, like a black frost. Like yeah, a, pretty much. Invert frost. Yeah. Wow. And so like you really need to get uh, elevation and like it's it's a challenge because we it's a regular thing to have like some really crazy frost during like the budding season. Uh, this next one. Moving back to something a little bit more classic. Freaking love this. It's so good. Yeah. This is. <laughs> it's, well, when you come from America, oaky white wine is sort of, you know, yeah. you yeah. grow up on that in juice yeah. boxes. Yeah. So my note for this was, it's like going to like the antique artifacts section in the museum and you like see some old stuff from like England or something and it's like, that probably took a lot of craftsmanship, it's probably hard work, this is very well made, however I don't really care. <laughs> I definitely appreciate um, Victorian architecture, uh, and I appreciate this wine. Uh, very, very delicious. Uh, I'd take six for 40 bucks. 90 bucks and 12. I... 90 bucks US would probably buy you a house, Tourette Gardens. <laughs> definitely. Uh, Lucky, what is this? Now, so this is no. Dapple from the Yarra Valley. No. Uh, awesome, okay. awesome We haven't seen this in a little while. No. Um, That's looking so good. Super, super good. Um, so you, uh, from like really high quality Yarra fruit, um, Definitely got a bit of like a sulfury thing, but it's like, oh, it's just such a perfectly great illustration of what Yarra Valley Chardonnay at its like peak is. Mm. It's just like when it's when it's looking like this, oh. That is a great price for sure. Yeah, I absolutely. Because that would be Even that would be like, like 17 cents US. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think maybe I think maybe like 25, actually, 20, 20, 25 or 26 bucks, right now. I yeah. think it's like the last time I checked, it's everything's right around 67 percent, so like two thirds. Mm. Number five, my wine of lineup. I was so taken by this wine. My my exact things were, I just kind of flew out of the glass. I reckon you could come up with 30 different descriptors of what's on the nose and another 30 for what's on the palate. And the thing that I admire about American red wines is their ability to be able to do that. And if that's not American, I'll eat my hat. That's <laughs> oh. just stunning. That's Cabernet Franc, hands down, amazing. I, I'm fairly sure, I'm kind of embarrassed that I automatically know the difference between the two, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that one's... Uh... What was it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I, I wanted, I wanted I 12, about. I wanted 12 and I'd spend 95 bucks a bottle for this. Uh, I, I, wanted, well. I, I wanted three and I'd spend, I'd spend 40 bucks, I think it's an amazing wine. Uh, Lucky, do you want to reveal what it is? Oh, it's so close! Adelaide Hills, oh my God, no Adelaide fucking Hills way. Menthea. Not no Cabernet. No fucking way, I've had this not one Cabernet before. Franc. Not Cabernet Franc, that's Menthea. That's such from a Adelaide good Hills. call to compare it to Menthea. Holy shit. This is the best Menthea I have ever tried. I want to It's so good. That is stunning. Last one. I don't even think this is Vitis Vinifera. This. I thought this was like um, an American variety. Based off what I knew about the lineup today, I was not expecting to taste anything like this. Um, this was the one wine that I hadn't tried anything like this before from the producer. I just had heard good things. Wait, no, that's not true. I did try one thing. Um, but I had not tried this cuvee before. I believe that's Cap Franc. Lucky, can you uh, please reveal? Um, oh yeah, I wanted um, I wanted three bottles for 70. Three for 40. And Domain? Domain's Fino. Fino, Cap Franc 2020. That's pretty cool. That's really interesting. Yeah. You know, that's how you sell Cabernet Franc to people. You make people think Think that... it's Pinot, Domain Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. I love that's that. That's so funny. Yeah. Monticello uh, Cabernet Franc. There yeah. you go, from Virginia. 12.7% alcohol. Only 1,000 bottles, mate. Yeah, so this is the, this is like a side, side project, basically. Wow. Uh, Mathieu Fino is a winemaker from Hermitage uh, who came over to Virginia. He's the head winemaker at King Family, which is uh, one of the larger producers in Virginia. Their stuff, I think, kind of tries to go more for that kind of polished mm. market. Um, this is kind of supposed to be his quote unquote natural thing. So it's all whole cluster, Sansouf. Zero, zero. Yeah, zero, uh, zero I, not zero, zero. There's definitely yeah. chemical inputs in the vineyard, Maybe. but yeah. So oh yeah, 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 okay. Um, in the winery then. But yeah, I think it's I think it's super cool. Um, it's not what I was expecting it to be. Well, that's super cool. Well, that's a yeah. fucking wild liner. I want to vote for the, uh, the, the, the half cider, half vanilla thing. I'll vote for that too. Because that's so tasty. That I think I would bonkers. vote for that one too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sweet, well, let's, let's smash that because we'll We've just finished vintage. <laughs> and Perry, thanks so much for, for yeah. smuggling no, those across <laughs> and sharing much. them with us. Well, thank That's you for so having cool. me here, both uh, on the pod and the whole season, so. No worries. Till next week, we'll be Wanna here. We're gonna drink some fucking cider. <laughs> <laughs>